Hello everybody. I think that many people have tried this kind of ice cream Snickers. Today we will cook it, only a giant size. But first, let's study the original. Therefore, we open it up. From the outside, it looks just like a chocolate bar. Let's look inside. So the first layer is milk chocolate, then a layer of peanuts with caramel, and the last layer is ice cream with cocoa and peanut butter. Let's taste it. Yeah, this is an awesome combination, you guys. Let's start cooking the ice cream. Milk powder is often used in factories, so we're gonna do the same. We collect it, measure out the right amount on the scales. We need three and a half kilograms. Pour the powdered milk into the first basin and another three and a half kilograms into the second. Here's also a little bit of cocoa so that the color of the ice cream is as in the original. You'll also need some sugar. It also needs to be measured out on the scales. You should get four and a half kilograms. Pour it all into the first basin. Then measure out the same amount of sugar and pour into the second. But now you will need a lot of water, 70 liters. To make it easier to mix, first pour half of the water out. And just combine the dry powders with water with a stick until you get kind of a cold cocoa. And repeat the same with the second basin. When everything is stirred really well, pour in the remaining water. In order to increase the fat content of the mixture, add some 33% cream. Now we need some xanthan and gore gum. They will make the mixture much thicker to get a good ice cream. We measure out 115 grams of each powder. Mix them together and gradually pour into the mixture. At the same time, mix with the mixer. These powders need to be mixed very carefully so that there are no lumps. And if everything is done correctly, the mass begins to thicken. The first batch is ready. Let's move on to the second. We'll pour in the xanthan and guar gum. Twenty minutes of stirring and our mass has become thick. It's time to put the ice cream in the freezer. We'll leave them here for the whole day. On the third day, we will need a lot of peanuts. Here is 50 kilograms. Our peanuts are peeled, but raw. So we'll fry them up. We pour almost a full cauldron. and turn on the gas. Now it needs to be constantly stirred so that the peanuts are fried evenly.
After 30 minutes of roasting, it begins to smell really tasty. Like some beans, there's a lot of this here. Therefore, the first batch of peanuts is definitely ready. Pour it into a saucepan. Done. And now we'll fill the cauldron with the next batch of raw peanuts and fry them too. So that way we do all 50 kilograms. The composition of the ice cream includes peanut butter. Therefore, we put the fried peanuts into a melanger. The stone millstones gradually grind the peanuts and because of the oil release, the mass becomes moist. So we add more. The melanger will grind the peanuts for two hours, after which the peanut butter is obtained. And to make it sweet, add some corn syrup. And pour the perfectly smooth peanut butter into a bowl. In total, we made three batches. Now our bowl is completely filled. We go to our ice cream, and we see that for the whole day, it has barely even set. Pour half of the peanut butter into each basin. and mix it into the ice cream with a large mixer. By the way, this will also interfere with the air bubbles so that the ice cream will turn out way more lush. Now we'll leave it to freeze. Meanwhile, we prepare a mold for the giant Snickers ice cream bar. The inner walls are lubed with oil and immediately smeared. Now our parchment sheet will perfectly stick to the walls and the number of folds will be minimal. Smooth out the parchment, lift up the wall, and fix the parchment with tape. Our first wall is ready. Do the same thing to the rest of the walls. We put some plywood in a food film and also install the walls and close the mold. Done. It's time to melt the first batch of milk chocolate, meaning 10 kilograms. Stir periodically so that the chocolate melts evenly. And an hour later, everything's ready. We remove the gastro capacity and pour all the chocolate on the bottom of the mold. Don't forget to scrape the remains from the walls. There's at least one kilogram of chocolate there. and spread the chocolate on the bottom of the white spatula. The next day, our chocolate is set, and our ice cream has two. So you need to mix it one last time to still mix up the air bubbles for Splendor.
done. While the form is still empty and live, we transfer to the freezer. We scoop up the ice cream and transfer it into the mold. Carefully level out the ice cream layer and close the freezer. For the caramel, pour eight liters of milk into a saucepan in advance. and put it on the stove to heat up at a low heat. Now you need to squeeze out seven and a half kilograms of corn syrup into a large saucepan. We set the pan on the burner and put 30 kilograms of sugar on to sleep. Pour four liters of water on top and mix so that all the sugar gets wet. Done. You can turn on the burner and cover the pan. Use a lid for this so it can heat up faster. When the caramel boils, we remove the lid and install a thermometer. Cook the caramel to 144 degrees. Now you will need a lot of butter. So open them up. This block is five kilograms and we need 4,200. Therefore, we cut off the excess and cut the rest into large cubes. And throw it into the caramel. Now this oil needs to be mixed with caramel. Now you just need to pour in eight liters of hot milk. and mix that with the caramel as well. At this point, the caramel's ready. Pour half of it into another saucepan. And cover all the roasted peanuts. Mix all this with a stick until the caramel envelops the peanuts. Done. We go to the freezer. and just put this mass into the mold with our hands.
We emptied out the first pan, so we bring in the second one and continue to fill in the mold with caramel. Carefully level up the caramel. And leave it to finally freeze overnight. The next day we're gonna take out our mold. And we open it up. We don't need the wooden walls anymore, so we remove them. And close the mold again. Pour some milk chocolate into the Marmite. and melt it. But this time we need a lot more fluid chocolate. Therefore, pour a glass of oil and mix. Now the chocolate is how you need it. Pour this in. First of all, fill the cavities that appeared after we removed the wooden walls. Melt another portion of chocolate. And pour it right on top. Smear this all over the surface. and wait for solidification so it can be opened. This giant Snickers ice cream is ready. In fact, it's one of the heaviest bars we've ever made. Its weight is as much as 200 kilograms and it took five days to prepare it. Let's cut it open and look inside. Hey everybody, today we decided to cook a giant Skittle. Let's open the packet and see what it's made of. Inside there are a bunch of small candies. If we crush them, it becomes clear that there is a candy coating around a soft chewy inside. Now let's buy everything we need to cook a giant Skittles. First up, you'll need a lot of sugar, a box of oil, we go to the produce section, then we take out quite a lot of lemons. We choose the largest and ripest watermelons and put them in the cart. We'll need a total of seven watermelons. We pull up to the checkout with two carts full. We unload them. Our check came out to $162. In addition to this, we bought another 30 kilograms of glucose syrup. To make it easier to work with, we'll pour it into a large saucepan. I ordered something special for this video.
These are semicircles made out of acrylic. They will serve as our huge Skittles mold. We fill the mold with oil and smear it around with a brush. Let's enroll the parchment paper. We make pretty deep cuts along the edges and carefully put it inside the mold. Thanks to the oil, the parchment sticks well to the mold. That way we cover up all the inside of the semicircle. Done, it turned out great. Now we put the saucepan on the scales. We put 150 grams of glucose syrup into it. and pour 350 grams of sugar into that. Now we pour in 100 milliliters of water. We put all this on the stove and cook the syrup. Be sure to use a thermometer. We need to wait until the temperature reaches 147 degrees Celsius. Done. Now let's squeeze a little purple food dye into a teaspoon and mix it into our candy coating. The acrylic molds don't really like changes in temperature, so to heat them up, we'll turn on really hot water and fill a bath. We lower the mold into the water, and only now do we pour in the candy coating. Yes, we'll be filling the mold for a long time, so we decided to make a double portion. So we'll be doing two equal saucepans at once. Put it on the stove. We cook up the mixture and add in the food coloring. Let's send the second mold into the bath. Pour the coating along the walls. Well, we cooked and molded the coating for seven hours. At some point, it began to set crookedly. I had to gradually cover everything up. We returned the molds to the studio. We've already made the outer layer for the candy. Now all we need to do is make the insides. There are many different Skittles flavors. We decided to come up with our own, watermelon. To help out with this, we have a hefty mechanical press. We transfer the watermelons to the sink and wash them thoroughly. We put the clean watermelons in a huge bowl. We install a trough under the press and put a metal barrel on top. We take a watermelon, cut off the end, and then do the same to the other side. We prep it up vertically and remove the entirety of the green peel. Now all we have is the pulp. We throw it into the barrel. Cover the top of the metal disc. Take another watermelon and clean it the same way. We send this to the barrel too, and cover it as well. In advance, we substitute a 20 liter empty cylinder at the bottom and put a funnel into it. We begin to turn the screw. We make sure that it enters the groove of the metal disc. The juice is squeezed out very evenly. It goes into the trough and drains down into the container. We twist the press with all our might. Two watermelons didn't give us enough juice. So we decided to peel three watermelons at once and cut each of them into pieces. We load them into the barrel and covering them with metal discs. Squeeze out the juice. We clean another watermelon. Squeeze the juice out of it too. Now we have almost a full container. 
but I want my Skittles to be sour. Let's squeeze the juice out of the lemons as well. First, we roll them with our hands on the table to loosen up the insides. Then, we cut and squeeze the juice using our hands. All the juice will be sent through a sieve into the container. By the time we get to the studio, the juice has separated, and the red part was at the bottom. We decided to try it, and the taste hasn't really changed at all. I mean, real watermelon juice can be transparent. We shake the container well, and the color comes back. For the inside of the candy, we need four pots. We pour 150 milliliters of watermelon juice into each of them. Then 200 grams of glucose syrup. And 300 grams of sugar into each. We put all this under the stove. Be sure to put a thermometer in one of the pots. The candy is boiling and you can't touch it at all. Just wait until it reaches 123 degrees. Open the butter. We cut it into small pieces. and one by one, send it into the pots, along with a teaspoon of white dye. Now we mix it up. The candy is ready. Just have to pour it into the molds. Oh, you have no idea how long we've been cooking all this. A day and a half. Finally, the molds are completely filled. Only a day later, the caramel completely cools down and becomes the desired soft consistency. Using a knife, we chip off the uneven edges of the candy. One half is covered with parchment. We put a board on top and turn it over. We remove the mold. Tear off the parchment. and turn over our candy half. The same should be done with the second one. Now, the most dangerous thing is to attach the two halves to each other. Then the worst thing imaginable happened. One half slipped and we heard a crunch, which really scared us. We are trying to connect the two halves. So we tear off the parchment and see the candy coating has split. We were really upset. Well, what can you do? We tried to at least save the filling. We transfer it into the mold. We'll have to redo the candy coating, but this time we'll do it differently. Again, we cover the mold with parchment, in the middle, we put a ring pasted with parchment. With the help of a hair dryer, we thoroughly warm up the mold. We cooked the purple coating again, but something really scary happened here. At some point, the hot candy exploded with such a force that it knocked off the grate, splattered the ceiling, half of the studio, and got on my face. With serious burns and eye injuries, I was taken to the hospital by ambulance. If you want to see how my face looks now, then follow the link in the description to my Instagram. I should say right away, this isn't for the faint of heart. While I'm recovering, my dad will finish the Skittle. He pours the purple candy down the walls of the mold. He files the uneven edges. and turns it over to empty the mold. Then he tears off the parchment, 
and takes out the ring in the middle. The edges of the lower half are now coated with the hot candy mixture. Now we connect the two halves very carefully and gently. Once again, we go around, connecting them at the crease. We take all the filling we managed to save. Using a knife, we cut off pieces from it. We fill our Skittle to the brim. and close it off from above. The joint is filled with the mixture. We just cut off the excess with a knife. Using a burner, we warm up our Skittle from the outside to melt small chips and sugary crumbs. On a piece of parchment, we draw the S logo. Now we melt white chocolate in a steam bath and fill it into a regular syringe. With its help, we first draw the outline of the letter, then fill in the inside. We wait for the chocolate to harden and transfer it to the candy. That's it, our giant Skittle is finally ready. We spent a lot of money, time, and most of all, health on this experiment. If my dad hadn't helped me, we probably would have never finished this video. Our Skittle weighs in at 78 kilograms. Let's smash it. We'll try both parts at once, the candy coating and the filling. Mmm, that's a really nice candy. Just as sweet as the original. And it has a nice watermelon aftertaste. If this video gets 250,000 likes, then we'll figure out a new way to surprise you. Subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you guys soon.